Tenko Hacks, a podcast about wellness, health and biohacking. Konnichiwa, this is Eva at Tenko Hacks. I am here with Kathleen Arnston, founder and CEO of Energy Bits. Kathleen founded Energy Bits in 2009. After personally witnessing Algie's amazing health benefits that helped her sister to strengthen her immune system while she was going through a chemotherapy. There are so many things about Energy Bits that I love about. It specializes in algae, something near and dear to my heart because I grew up in Japan and as such, algae is a normal part of my diet, just as other vegetables, let's say tomatoes. But what makes your company really unique, Kathleen, is your personal deep passion and knowledge in algae. And now you are on a mission to educate people about health benefits of algae. I love that. To start with, can you please share on how you got interested in algae and decided to create a company specializing in those unknown superfoods outside Asia? Well,、um, I, I thank you so much,、uh, first of all, for inviting me to share my knowledge. And I'm so thrilled to speak with someone who grew up with algae because that's a rare, a rare occurrence <laughs> and、uh, impossible here in America where I am based. I'm actually Canadian by birth, but I have lived in the United States for 33 years.、Um, and I, I had a corporate career. I have an MBA and I was doing international business.、Um, Nothing to do with algae at all, nothing to do with nutrition at all. And then my younger sister in Canada developed breast cancer, as you mentioned, and、um, her oncologist, which is a cancer specialist, recommended she change her diet to an alkaline diet because they said it would help with her healing as she went through chemo. So, but they didn't tell her what an alkaline diet was. Or, why it was good for her. So, the first call she made was to me because I, I love her and I'm also a very good researcher. And I discovered that a plant ba- an alkaline diet was mostly a plant based diet. So, I made some recommendations. She did change her diet. She did go through chemo. She's now 10 years cancer free. And in the process, I started digging into the science of plant based nutrition、uh, and saw the power of it.、Um, and then, so I gave up my corporate career. And went back to school because I needed some sort of education, nutrition education. And then I taught nutrition, plant based nutrition, for a year. And this is what led me to algae because I, as I was giving my lectures on plant based nutrition, I found out that basically everybody knows they should eat more vegetables. So I wasn't telling them anything new. But what I did learn was that it was too. Difficult for them. It, they either didn't live near a grocery store, or now with COVID, it was, they didn't want to go to a grocery store, or they took, it, vegetables took a lot of time to, to clean, to cook, to eat, and so,、uh, or their husbands wouldn't eat them, or their kids. So I thought, well, how can I p- help people be healthy if I can't get them to eat more vegetables? Because it took too long and there were too many obstacles. So I thought, I've got to find something that's fast and easy. Has all the benefits of vegetables without any of the work. So I, I went back to everything I found for my sister. Nothing was working, nothing was working. And then boom, I got to algae. And that's when the miracle happened. And that was 11 years ago. And I'm more in love with algae now than I ever have been because I've spent 11 years researching the science. I'm going to share some of that science with you today because it's the answer to everything.、Uh, algae is the most nutrient dense food in the world. That's a quote from NASA. The、uh, United Nations says it's the answer to world hunger because it has three times the amount of protein as steak.、Uh, it's the,、um, it has the highest concentration of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is what makes plants green. It has a thousand times more chlorophyll than、uh, any kind of Chinese greens and even 25 times more than chlorophyll. We're going to talk about the importance of chlorophyll. It's been used, as you know, in Asia, most notably Japan. For about 50 years, it's a, a multi billion, that's with a B, agricultural crop there. It's almost as big as the beef industry.、Um, and it's the most studied food in the world. There's almost 100,000 studies documenting the efficacy and the benefits we're going to talk about today. So it's all on, it's scientifically proven. But scientists only like to talk to other scientists. So no one until I came along has really gone into the science and made it understandable for consumers. So with all this, Great、um, nutrition and great science, and 50 years of use, and yet nobody else in the world seemed to know about algae. I decided I would spend the rest of my life 
telling and teaching people about it and building a company that provided the purest, safest, most nutrient-dense algae in the world. And we are sold through United States through doctors. And on top of all that, if, if you haven't seen a movie that was released recently by Netflix, it's a big yes. movie company here in, in uh, the United States. Mm -hmm. The movie is called Seaspiracy, S-E-A-S-P-I-R-A-C-Y, mm -hmm. Seaspiracy. And I encourage everybody to watch it because they talk about how the commercial fishing is damaging and killing our ocean environments, including all the fish. And guess what? Their recommendation to save the oceans is, drum roll, to eat algae instead because algae has three times more protein than, than fish. It is the original source of omega-3 and it's a sustainable crop. So as more millions of people watch this movie, they're going to hear the message to eat algae. And so I can't wait to share with, with your community the other scientific reasons why they want to take algae um, because it will change their life, their children's health, and the world. <laughs> that is really exciting and powerful story to hear. And we do have actually on Netflix here, but I wasn't aware of the movie. So thank you very much for telling about that. Oh, I will definitely will. watch it. Yes. Um, it sounds like a very, uh, very interesting story to uh, to to um, to listen to. Um, so your your viewpoint, where you come from, is it's it's a very strong contrast to where I come from. So just as I introduced uh, myself to you, I come from Japan. So algae to me is such a natural part of my diet and I'm, I'm almost blind to, I think we are almost blind to, because um, I think I have read somewhere that um, an average Japanese person consumes between 50 to 100 grams of algae every day as a yeah. natural part of a diet. And I believe that um, it is not um, the case in North America, right? Neither in in the US, in no, in Canada, you uh, you consume little, or maybe no uh, sea vegetables. So it's my, my macro algae, and we are going to discuss micro algae, which is uh, the the product your company is selling today. But um, also um, micro algae, so like uh, chlorella, for example, it's very popular in Japan. It's been I believe Chlorella has been under Spirina. So thanks to company like uh, Energy Bit, it has become popular outside Asia recently, I believe during the last 10 years or so. But um, as long as I can remember, Chlorella specifically has been around in Japan. I mean, since I can, I mean, since, since my childhood, I mean, it's always been there yeah, yeah. and uh, everybody knows what it is. And uh, many people have, have, have taken it as well. So it's such a natural part of our life, really. And um, as such, we, in a family way, we maybe never even like truly appreciate its, its power. It's really powerful um, almost we can say like medicine, food as medicine. So um, um, maybe we can, can you please describe a little bit more about um, nutritional sciences of algae? You mentioned chlorophyll, but um, please, um, um, yes. Okay. Well, thank you for that because um, a couple of, before we go into the nutrition thing, um, I have noticed through my research that the Japanese tend to have very low rates of uh, cancer, very high uh, rates of longevity and fabulous skin and hair. <laughs> Thank you. I hope that uh, it, is, uh, it uh, applies to me as well. I don't know. But um, yes, in general, long longevity is, of course, and your Japan is known for that. Yes. And, uh, and you have been taking chlorella algae every day um, for you know decades. And I, there's lots of reasons why you have such wonderful longevity, skin and hair and, and health. But I'm convinced that chlorella algae plays a part of it. And we're going to explain some of that why. And so, as you, and the other point you mentioned is that when you are so used to seeing something and using something, you forget that other people don't use it or know it. And 99% um, of algae is grown in Asia, 99.9%. .9%. There's virtually none grown in North America or Europe. There's a little bit now growing in, in France and a few other countries, but it's all in Asia. And so people here just didn't, or in Europe, just didn't grow up with algae. So they wouldn't even know to think about it because you don't know what you don't right. know, right? That's very true. <laughs> um, 
So, and I also point out here in America that, you know, up until about 20 years ago, we didn't know about stevia until uh, five or six years ago, we actually probably didn't know much about kale or, or chi- kiwa or chia seed or matcha or um, even CBD. And, uh, and, and these are all products that have been used in other countries for centuries. Uh, and now, you know, thanks to some probably entrepreneur who did the science like I have and packaged it so people wouldn't think it's weird, it's making its way out into the mainstream. So I remind people, and you'll appreciate this, that algae isn't new. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's just maybe new to you, whoever is listening. If you're outside of Asia, it's just new to you, but it is definitely not new. Okay, that being said, let me explain what algae is, and we'll talk about the two main ones that we sell that are the two main ones that everybody uses and buys um, because they are very powerful uh, and will change your, your, your life, I promise you. So first of all, algae is everywhere. It was the first life on Earth almost 4 billion years ago, and they have fossils to prove it. And it's still here. So, you know, humans only showed up on the earth about 100 million years ago. So the fact that algae has been here from the very beginning, and in fact, it's responsible for uh, providing about 80% of the oxygen on earth. Most people think it's the Amazon rainforest, but no, it's algae. So it grows in the ocean, the river, the lake, the streams, your aquarium, your swimming pool. (laughs) And those are all, those algae are all fine for the fish and the whales to eat, but they're poisonous to humans. There are two two categories within algae. One is called macroalgae, which is what you mentioned, and the other one is microalgae. So let me tell you what macroalgae is. We're not going to really talk about it here much. It's the big stringy stuff that you see washing up on shore. It's also known as kelp or dulse. And it has very um, high fiber and probably and high and high iodine because it does come from the ocean. But there's virtually no nutrition in it. But very good fiber. Lots of there's lots of companies now providing kelp noodles, which are terrific as a substitute for pasta. So uh, kelp and you know, macroalgae is important for fiber. Microalgae is what we're talking about today. And what it is, it's, it's called microalgae because it's microscopic in size. And I think I read somewhere that about 100 microscopic cells would fit on the head of a pin. That's how tiny it is. Now, the other cool, the cool thing about this tiny cell is that it is the most nutrient dense food in the entire universe. And there are two main categories of microalgae. Um, one is a blue-green algae and the other one is green algae. Now they're they're everywhere. Remember, they grow everywhere in the ocean. So if that, anybody goes on the internet and reads about toxic blue-green algae, yes, if it's grown in the ocean, but that's not how we uh, grow ours and that's not how we, the stuff that you consume that you find in stores. The algae that you consume in stores, the blue-green algae is spirulina and the green algae is cl- chlorella. And they're, they're tough to say and spell, but, um, and they are harvested not in the ocean. They are grown in fresh water. It's also known as hydro, growing things hydroponically. Now, uh, lots of vegetables are grown this way, uh, tomatoes, lettuce, but I want to assure people this is grown in fresh water. So there are no toxins from the ocean and they are carefully monitored. We're world renowned for having the highest quality because we grow ours in triple filtered spring mountain water. We grow ours in Taiwan and that um, we test the water every day and then we don't use high heat. So there's no, uh, all the enzymes are intact. So it's still a raw food and we don't put any binders. So I just want to throw that in there, but everybody grows it in fresh water. Okay. So spirulina is a blue green algae and chlorella is a green algae. Um, what is the difference between the two of them? Well, they're as different from each other as night is from day, and they offer your health very completely different benefits. Spirulina, the blue-green algae, is called blue-green because it has two pigments in it. It has the one called chlorophyll, which is the green one, and it also has a blue one called phycocyanin that has other healing properties, and we can talk about some of those. Generally, spirulina is known as an energizing algae. That's why we call our spirulina on energybits.com energy bits because it gives you energy. We thought that was a lot easier to remember (laughs) than spirulina. How does it give you energy? Well, there's about 40 things I can think of. I'll just highlight a few of them. One is that, as I mentioned earlier, spirulina has the highest concentration of protein in the world. Not only that, but the protein is already in amino acid form. If you know anything about nutrition, you know that your body cannot absorb protein. If it's animal protein, it must break it down into what's called amino acids. And this can take up to three days. And um, very often you only absorb about 10% of the protein as amino acids. But with spirulina and chlorella, actually, 
your body, because they're all the proteins already in amino acid, your body absorbs 99.9% .9 of it. So it's very what's called bioavailable. Now, not only does that um, protein get absorbed quickly because it's already in amino acids, by the way, it's 18 of the 20 aminos and it's called a complete protein because it has all the aminos your body cannot create. In addition, uh, I didn't know that. I didn't know it was a complete amino acid profile. Yes. That's amazing. Well, I'll tell you one more little interesting tidbit. Um, I was researching, as I do every night, it seems, uh, the, um, the the nutrients of algae. And I found out that, and I saw a chart, and it was showed the, the amino acids and the nutrient profile of mother's breast milk. And I thought, gosh, that looks awfully familiar. And sure enough, it's virtually identical to the nutrient value, the nutrients, the amino acids, the same aminos in the same proportions as spirulina. And so this helped explain to me why in Japan I read that if the babies couldn't digest mother's breast milk, if they gave them spirulina or chlorella in water, it was the only thing that kept them alive. And now I understand why it's, it's be, particularly with spirulina because of this uh, virtually identical nutrient profile. Pretty cool. And we'll send you the, art, the article. On the, the chart. It is really cool. And I would like to stop you a little bit there. So you mentioned energy. Spirulina is uh, one of the most significant uh, benefits is energy. Um, does, are you aware of any study or any scientific data about spirulina's impacts on mitochondria? Because mitochondria is the energy-producing organ yes. right, in the body. Yes. Well, um, absolutely. In fact, um, it's not the aminos that contribute to the energy at the mitochondria level. I'll explain in a minute the rest of the reasons why the spirulina does give you energy. But interestingly, um, the spirulina, well, both of them have high chlorophyll, and we'll get to that in a minute. And there's some science that shows that if you um, have chlorophyll in your body, at the same time you uh, are receiving sunlight or red light therapy, the chlorophyll um, ca causes the CoQ10 to um, recycle itself. CoQ10 is a fat-based nutrient that is required in what's called the electron chain transport transport chain right <laughs> i know it's a mouthful and i do so apologize for geeking out on people but it's the process by which your mito mitochondria are these what's called organelles inside of your cells and they're what cause the energy to be generated and up to now everyone thought you required either fats or carbohydrates to have that process occur but this new science shows that this process can occur on its own with just chlorophyll and sunlight because one of the pro the nutrients required in this pro generation of ATP is a is something called CoQ10 and it com what it does is it it converts it takes the fr a free um, when in the in the process of generating energy free radicals are thrown off and yes. um and and one of the, and so coq10 becomes a free radical even though it's part of the process but when you have chlorophyll it restores it back to its original form so that it can now basically be used again it re, it's recycled and it throws off twice as much energy so well and we'll talk more about that when we get into chlorophyll because sure it that's that's super interesting and please please do go into the details because our audience is uh biohackers okay. so they they love to okay. geek out right. about yeah. the details yeah so and many of them so i myself including included uh we have the, the red light therapy panel at home yes. and i just wonder basing it on what you just said so if i take um spirulina um uh, or chlorella, so well, either, either, either one. The spirulina, either and then one. I'll tell you why spirulina might be better because it gets into your bloodstream faster, and I'll explain that in a minute. Okay, if I take them, uh, let's say thirty tablets of uh, energy bits, and then go in front of the 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 as a red light um, uh, therapy panel, and I do take CoQ10 as well. It also comes from Japan, the Kaneko, uh, that is active form of um, um, and CoQ10. So if I take those three. Um, at the same time, maybe I'm kind of maximizing the mitochondrial Absolutely. benefits. Absolutely. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, and I just bought myself a red light therapy as well, because as we age, um, our, our mitochondria also age, <laughs> and there are less of them, and they're less, um, they're less functional. Right. So, um, and the chlorophyll will also help restore the, and both algae will, the, the, the health of the mitochondria, but adding that um, 
adding either algae to your red light therapy, or uh, uh, if that's the order that you've already got red light therapy, when you, you're going to just supercharge your mitochondria and your health by adding the algae. And in my case, I've always been taking algae. I, I take a ton of it every day. I just added the red light therapy a couple of weeks ago, and I instantly felt the difference. It's mm. It's just it's like supercharging your body. And, you know, I, I don't want to go kind of woo woo on you, but back in the Egyptian age, they worshiped the sun. And I, they, I think they knew about the red light, you know, the healing benefits of the sun. The unfortunate part of the sun is that it also has the UV lights mm -hmm. or UV rays, which are damaging to your skin. If you go out at peak hours, you do need the vitamin D. So if you manage your sun exposure effectively and you, and, or I think the red light therapy is even better because you only are getting the UV, the, the red light component, um, you, you could probably live forever and live better. Clearly you want to live better. Who wants to just live longer and in pain? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What you're so, talking about is health span. And I think yeah. that's um, yes. the interest of everybody listening to. Absolutely. Yes. Um, yes. But um, so, would you like to, yes, uh, yes. just, um, yes. Let me circle <laughs> back to spirulina. So yes. the reason why I suggest the spirulina for the red light therapy, although both of them, you know, chlorof chlor chlorella has a higher amount of chlorophyll, but spirulina, one of the reasons you get energy from spirulina is not just because of the, all this protein, but it is technically a bacteria. Spirulina does not have a cellulose wall or a nucleus, but because it has no cellulose wall, it gets absorbed into your body almost instantly. In fact, when we first started, we were getting a lot of coverage by a lot of bloggers who were runners, and then the and then the the um, long distance runners, and then the Olympic athletes started finding out about us because it gave them steady energy and focus uh, without upsetting their stomach. Because of course, there's no carbs or sugar or contaminants. So um, this. This concept of having steady energy is is tightly aligned with the spirulina because you get all the, the aminos, which I've already mentioned, and then it's also loaded with B vitamins. B vitamins are what convert the aminos into energy. And then because there's no cellulose wall, all of that gets absorbed. It literally, you don't even digest it. It just gets into your bloodstream so quickly. So it's very, what I call efficient nutrition. So the other ways you get energy from this, from the, um, from the spirulina is we, we've covered the aminos. You've got the B vitamins. It's also what's called a vasodilator. So it releases nitric oxide in your bloodstream and that opens up your blood vessels so that more nutrients and more oxygen can reach your brain and your muscles and your body. So that gives you energy. It's a very high amount of um, iron. Iron is what carries oxygen in your blood, and that gives you energy. It is um, loaded with omega-3, uh, well, actually loaded with essential fatty acids, including omega-3, and that improves your brain functioning. And, and so that gives you brain energy and focus because the focus is a really critical thing. It has boron, which is uh, a critical um, mineral for um, the um, for brain thought, it connects the synapses. So your again, your thoughts are, are much more efficient. So all these things um, coordinate, and then a very high chlorophyll, as I mentioned earlier, which helps with the, facilitates the mitochondria, um, he heals the cell walls. So it just gives you energy. Now the kind of energy you get isn't like a lightning bolt from the sky. The best way we describe it is you'll just feel fresh. That's it. You might not even notice it at first, except if you take it before you go running or weightlifting or um, you'll you'll run faster or you'll lift more and you won't even notice it. You just won't fatigue. Um, so it's a very subtle, quiet energy. Um, and it's only from nutrition because there are no no contaminants, no sugar or whatever. The other cool thing about energy uh, spirulina is uh, it's no it satisfies your hunger because it has all that protein and all that essential fatty acids, very satisfying. So it's great for intermittent fasting. I take it every morning. In the morning, I start with water with lemon, and then I have a drink called yerba mate, which is a, uh, a, a leaf similar to green tea. And then I have my algae and my red light therapy. I got my little routine in the morning and sets, my, sets me up for the day. So 
um, you, it satisfies your hunger, but you don't get any, there's no carbs. So it does not interfere with your glucose or your ketones. Um, there's one calorie per tablet. If you're on a calorie restricted diet, you know, if you're, a, you know, in a sport that like boxing or something. So, um, again, very, very efficient nutrition, no carbs. Most people take their spirulina in the morning or the afternoon and before a workout. Cause that's generally when you want your thoughts to be very well organized and your physical energy. Right. So, um, and you can't take too much of it because it's just food. It's, it's just a, like I said, a vegetable, although it's, it's really kind of a confusing vegetable because it's not really a vegetable. It's not a land plant. Uh, I was just uh, interviewed by Dr. Gundry. I don't know if you know, Dr. Stephen Gundry. Yes, he's, um, he's, yeah, he's quite well known. Yes, um, yes. Absolutely. So he had me on his podcast last week and he's a big fan of algae, particularly ours, um, because if anyone's uh, knowledgeable and you know, a follower of Dr. Gundry, you'll know that he's a, he's pointed out that a lot of reason why people um, you need to be cautious with some vegetables is because of th something called lectins or oxalates. Yes. These are very, very um, small, but sharp pointed and can be damaging proteins that um, if you're sensitive to them, they can cause punctures in your stomach lining and uh, which can lead to autoimmune. Now, algae doesn't have any of them. And I've done lab tests to prove it. And the reason why algae, first of all, the reason why plants have, or like almonds have a lot of uh, oxalates as well. Uh, spinach has a lot, kale has a lot. So there's a lot of vegetables that we would think would be good for you, but they have these oxalates or lectins in them that can be damaging. And the reason why they're in there is because plants grew, um, uh, you know, evolved on land. And they develop these things called lectins and oxalates to protect themselves from predators, from bugs, because they're poisonous. So, and they can be, they can be, not for everybody, but they can be poisonous to humans too. Well, here's the reason why algae doesn't have any of those. Algae didn't start on the land. Algae started in the ocean. And so it's considered a sea vegetable, but it's technically not a vegetable because of these things I just told you, spirulina is actually a bacteria and, it doesn't, and ours doesn't grow in the sea. So it's a bit confusing for people, but it's very rewarding because you can get all the benefits of, of vegetables without any of the downside, none of the carbs, none of the work. You know, when I used to lecture people about in my, in my classes about the importance of plant-based nutrition and i got so much pushback saying well it's so much work and it takes so long blah 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 well as you're going to find out we we sell our algae in tiny little tablets they're about the size of a baby aspirin you can put them in a smoothie you can swallow them you can chew them most people swallow the spirulina I just want to forewarn you it does not taste very good it's very chewy very earthy so just swallow them but each one of those tiny tablets has the same nutrition as an entire plate of vegetables. Because we did this, we have this quote from NASA that says one gram of algae has the same nutrition as um, a thousand grams of fruits and vegetables. One to a thousand. And I know your people can't see this, but I'm showing you a little tablet. It is a tiny tablet. A yeah. Tiny, tiny tablet. And if I'm on a, a you know a YouTube video or something, as what I'm gonna do right now, I pop it in my mouth, I chew them, and it's like I just had the equivalent of a plate of vegetables. No work, no cleaning, no cooking, no carbs, virtually no calories. So this is why I think algae tablets are the answer to everyone, for everyone, for everything, because there is absolutely zero work required and a thousand times more nutrition than you'll get from any other food anywhere in the world. And uh, it's, it's, it's remarkable and it's safe because it's grown in fresh water and it's sustainable, as I mentioned, this whole seaspiracy issue. So anyway, spirulina um, also um, supports in, in, uh, your skin and hair because it has so much protein. Now, there's been a big push recently, and I'm very excited about it, of uh, collagen. because uh, And a company called Vital Proteins really is the one mm -hmm. that put collagen on the map. And I don't want to... And I'm very proud of what they've done and they they recently got acquired by Nestle for a you know billion dollar valuation so they took something from nothing and created a huge brand and great awareness and they provide a lot of science too but i point out two things to people first of all collagen is made from crushed up animal and fish bones so if you are interested in sustainability collagen should not be on your radar and good news 
algae should be because algae contains all the same protein that you can get from collagen. Plus, it has chlorophyll, plus 40 other vitamins and minerals that collagen doesn't have, plus it's a sustainable, eco-friendly crop. So if you like collagen, think of algae as collagen on steroids, but it's a sustainable steroid. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to um, to um, to um, describe it. Really. Um, so you mentioned um, algae is uh, full of nutrition, not only um, prote proteins, uh, amino acids, but uh, also. Um, I remember in many of your previous interviews, you mentioned uh, vitamin yes. K. Uh, could you maybe also describe why algae can be considered a great source for this uh, yes. very important and, vitamin? And uh, vitamin, there's twice as much vitamin K in chlor in chlorella. When we, we just covered spirulina, and I want to get to chlorella in a, in a minute. Um, and it has twice as much K, in, uh, vitamin K two, as um, as spirulina. So so why why is vitamin what does vitamin K two do, and why is everyone deficit in it, and why do you need it? Okay, so. Vitamin K2 was only discovered about 25 years ago. So it's a relatively new vitamin. And so, um, it, you know, don't feel badly that if you don't know about it, but you can certainly Google it. And there's lots of science about it now. It was discovered actually at Harvard. Um, and, and it's related to K1, but humans cannot convert K1 to K2. We don't have the bacteria that facilitates that. Only animals do. But let me tell you first what K2 does, and then I'll tell you why we don't have it and why you need it in your algae. So vitamin K2 moves excess calcium from soft tissue into your bones. Now, we're, you say, well, what's, what's wrong with calcium? Well, they're realizing that um, to, we're all taking calcium supplements and we're taking D3 to help with absorption of calcium. But, but what's happening is we're getting too much calcium. And when you have excess calcium in your, uh, it, it, it lodges in what's called soft tissue. And soft tissue includes things like your brain, <laughs> Alzheimer's, right? Your blood vessels and your heart. heart. Uh, yeah. your skin, mm -hmm. your organs, and they're realizing, so I'll walk you through some of them. So blood vessels, they're realizing that half of heart disease, which is caused by arteriosclerosis, is being caused by calcium. Arteriosclerosis is the hardening of your arteries. And guess what's hardening? Calcium, because you have too much calcium in there. Mm -hmm. um, they're realizing Alzheimer's is partly the calcification of your brain. They're realizing that um, kidney stones and other organ disorders, kidney stones are, are, calcif are calcified little stones. They're, um, they're made of uh, um, uric acid and, and calcium. Right. And in your skin, and I don't have any wrinkles and I attribute it to a lot of uh, using a lot of chlorella, calcium gets into your skin and in your skin you have collagen and elastin and elastin is sort of like the scaffolding that holds up your skin and you only get so much of it and so the calcium lodges into the into the elastin and and damages it which causes the effectively causes the equivalent of the scaffolding to collapse and that leads to wrinkles so so we and only cal, only vitamin K two can have this function the, to move the excess calcium out of these soft tissues and into your bones and actually your teeth, which is where it should be stored. Your bones are where you have the highest concentration of calcium, um, and the, so it does help with preventing osteoporosis as well. Although quite honestly, um, the better thing to help your bones are, are minerals and protein. So why don't we have K two in our bodies? Well. In America, the reason why is because it just doesn't exist anywhere in any food except animal grass-fed animal protein, a dish that I'm sure you're familiar with called natto. Right. I love it. I, I know you probably hate it, but I do eat it for breakfast. I know. Only the Japanese love natto, and it, and it has like a, a <laughs> lifetime supply of vitamin K2 in it in, in every serving, but it, nobody in anywhere else in the world eats it, so that's kind of off the table. But I discovered through our lab tests that algae has vitamin K2, and the chlorella has twice as much as the spirulina. So why don't we have vitamin K2 in our diets because these are the only places where you can find vitamin K2. And it wasn't a problem. There wasn't a shortage of K2 in our American diet until the early 1970s. Because up until then, all of the cattle 
were nicely grazing on grass. And cattle have the bacteria in their gut right. that allow them to convert K1, which is found in anything green, to K2. So when we ate the animal protein, we were getting the K2. But back in the late 60s and early 70s, the farmers discovered that if they fed the corn or the animals corn and put them in <laughs> enclosures, they would get faster, fatter, fatter, faster, and they would make a lot more money. So that's what they did. So up until recently, when now there's you know very targeted grass-fed animal protein again available, uh, for the last 30, 40 right. ish years, we've all been eating an animals that have been fed corn. And there's nothing green about corn. So that's when the supply of K2 in our diet completely disappeared. Now, you can get vitamin K2 supplements, and they are available, um, but K2 is a very complicated vitamin. And it turns out the only kind uh, of K2 that your brain can absorb, your mm -hmm. rest of your body can absorb all the other variations, is a variation called M4. And it is the type of K2 that's in the algae. It's only found in natural food. So it's in the animal fed, uh, grass fed animal protein, and it's in the algae. But if you're not so worried about that, and you, you can still just go buy K2 supplements, but just be aware that it's not a version that your brain can absorb because the right. type of K2 that's in the supplements is um, fermented chickpeas. Uh, and it's it's good enough, but I tell people why cheat yourself from every getting all the benefits. That's why I say why would you have collagen when you can have algae? You get everything collagen offers plus a thousand times more things. So so anyways, that's the story about K two. It's a very important vitamin. It will help you in so many ways. Uh, and I'm a purist, so I like to get all of my nutrients from food, not from supplements. And I, I that's totally why I agree. remind people that algae yeah. is not a supplement. It's a it's a it's a food crop. Um, mm -hmm. That's uh, you know I know you know, I know your listeners can't see this, but I'm showing you now a farm. This one's actually a spirulina farm. You probably know that chlorella grows in circular ponds, not because um, of the way that they grow yes. it. So yes, anyways. Is it a picture of a picture from your actual where energy bits products are harvested? This one actually is not. They don't allow me to take pictures, but that this is it's virtually identical. So right. spirulina grows, just so people know, in long, narrow, uh, they're called raceways. Um, they're long, narrow, um, you know, ponds, you know, pools, I guess. What I don't know what else to call them. Because spirulina grows in a spiral. So they plant the, the spirulina at one end and it just sort of spirals its way to the end. Yeah, sort of that's like probably where the name comes from, spirulina, yes, isn't it? spirulina, because yeah. it's a spiral. Yes. Chlorella uh, doesn't that grow that way. It puffs out unilaterally in a circle. So whenever you see, you can tell what kind of farm you're looking at by the shape of the pool. Because if it's round, it will be chlorella. If it's long and narrow, it's spirulina. So don't let anyone ever trick you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So um, you already mentioned um, um, how you feel uh, when you take uh, your spirulina. So you say you, you chew it. And, well, uh, you, yeah. Yes. Well, I do because you know it's like I'm, you know, I'm I'm the originator. I mean, I'm I'm the founder. <laughs> so I I love my algae. They're like children to me. But uh, most people swallow their spirulina right. because it's very chewy. Um, you may, if you like the flavor, it's great because now you feel, you know, you get that satisfaction of eating something, and it will get a little get into your bloodstream a little faster if you chew it. But I would say ninety nine percent of people swallow it. And in terms of the quantity, um, you know, you could start with just three or four tablets in the morning, uh, five or 10 are better. If you're doing a workout, um, we would encourage you to do, you know, 15 or 20. If you're an athlete or, you know, look, need some serious um, nutrition and energy, then, you know, 30 for sure. We fuel NHL teams. They put 75 in their smoothie before of spirulina before a game mm -hmm. because they need a lot of energy on, <clears throat> excuse me, on the ice. We fuel and uh, Olympic teams. We had so many Olympic teams using our both spirulina and chlorella, and I still need to talk about chlorella. Uh, during the uh, winter Sochi Olympics, right. I sent two, two of my team over there, and we had complete invitation and access to the U.S. Olympic Village and the Canadian because I'm Canadian. So, yes. um, so it's it's and and you can go on our website. We have at least fifty endorsements from professional and Olympic athletes on our website. We don't pay them a dime. They have to buy their own algae, but they. <laughs> 
they just love the product because it's it works so well and it's so clean yeah. and there's no contaminants and we do third party lab tests and all that sort of good stuff. And they have two testimonies, right? Because yes. you know they are not sponsored by you, no. and they still want to, you know, come to you. And uh, and I believe that uh, you offer your products also to doctors, functional medicine doctors, yes. and um, that really tells about the efficacy and the quality of your products. Yes. I, I believe. And my I myself, I, I I told you just before we started recording this interview, but um, for me, um, well. After I, 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 I left Japan, um, I was uh, on a search for the best um, algae products, basically, because I said I'm so used to taking algae, both in forms of macro and micro algae, and I really missed um, um, taking chlorella. And I did a research, and um, uh, fortunately, I, I, I happened to listen to your talk um, in on YouTube, and then uh, I felt your vibrant energy and your passion and your and I was so amazed to um, really listen to someone who is so knowledgeable about algae coming, you know, who is not from Asia, who has not been, who, who is not really grown up with with algae, but now so knowledgeable and and uh, teaching other people about its benefits. So I really, um, and that's why um, I, I discovered Energy Bits, and I tried your um, um, Chlorella so product first. And I have never stopped taking it since then. It's really, um, um, it's really um, clean, and it's really um, high quality products. I can I can attest. Um, and I, I really I I take it every day. So sati tablets usually, and um, switch to spirulina sometimes um, when I and when I feel like such. Um, I usually take spirulina, as you say, um, in the morning time because uh, it's um, it's um, it's energy. Um, providing i am not sure if you have heard people saying if you take spirina too late in the evening do you have you heard people saying oh it disturbs with with sleep or is it okay to take it late in the evening as um, well yeah we've actually had a lot of people tell us that it actually helps them sleep because it has so much protein that takes the edge off your hunger and if you haven't eaten mm. and you're still doing that intermittent fasting you know you could take the chlorella as well but the, the spirulina is the one that satisfies your hunger better and faster. Um, but because it's not a stimulant, it, it, uh, it doesn't prevent any kind of sleep. Um, although we, and we're, I, I'd like to, I'll talk about chlorella next. Um, we generally recommend chlorella at night because not only does it still have the protein that would satisfy that hunger eventually, it has the highest amount of tryptophan in the world. Tryptophan is the precursor to melatonin, which is um, uh, facilitates sleep. So um, anyways, so, so that's the one we generally recommend you take at night, but the spirulina would not interfere with your sleep uh, at mm -hmm. all. Um, so it's not that kind of energy, um, but everyone's different. So um, just listen to your body. I mean, you, you may find that it, it does interfere. So all I would say was, well, then don't take it at night. <laughs> it's a pretty simple fix. <laughs> Do you have a protocol for your own personal um, algae, algae intake? Yeah. Well, I, as I mentioned, I start, uh, I have a few spirulina in the morning because I'm pretty energized about what I do. So I don't need a lot of energy. Uh, and, and But then I also... Then I, you know, I don't want people to think they have to take as much as I do. I mean, remember, I, I don't have to pay for mine and right. I've been using it for so long that I absolutely, I crave it and I love it. So I, I have about 30 or more, maybe 50 in the morning and then I, I snack on it throughout the day and I have probably another 30 to 50 at night. So I, I'm over a hundred a day. Um, now I will tell you my poop is a little green <laughs> because of the chlorophyll. <laughs> But um, I have virtually no wrinkles, and I attribute that, A, I don't eat sugar, but um, and I do drink a lot of water, but I attribute it mostly to the, chloroph chlor the chlorophyll and the K2 in the chlorella. So um, let me, and then, so, so I have them all throughout the day, but I, I start my day with um, algae, and I end it with algae too. It's, and, I, and I eat my chlorella. I eat them both, but I, I eat my chlorella, and I'm going to switch over to t talk about chlorella because... It's delicious. If you add <laughs> sea salt or macadamia nuts, which are, if you're ketogenic, macadamia nuts are fantastic because they're very high in fat. When you eat macadamia nuts, just one or two with a, you know, five or 10 chlorella tablets you and you close your eyes, you would swear that you're eating potato chips. They are delicious. <laughs> or, you know, eat almonds if the lectins and oxalates aren't an issue for you. Um, put them on your salad as a 
crunchy garnish, uh, mix them up with any kind of trail mix. Um, so they're still very green, but they taste more like a soy nut or a sunflower seed, and they're not chewy like like the spirulina. So they're delicious as a, as a snack. So try to, if you can, try to enjoy eating them because it's much more satisfying um, than just swallowing them. Because um, uh, uh, and the kids love to swallow chew them because it turns they both of them because they turn their tongue green. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's fun. Kind of fun. I do have a secret recipe of uh, with a chlorella and the chlorella tablets and the macadamia nut uh, butter. Ooh. So I. I mix them together with uh, dates, dried dates. I um, I wet it a little bit and for a sweetener, and I make an energy ball, and it, it is very delicious. It's a great com combination, macadamia wow. nuts yeah. and um, chlorella. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Um, so let's talk a little bit about chlorella, because we talked about sure. spirulina, how it's energizing, great for your skin and hair, good for intermittent fasting, take it in the morning, it's generally swallow it. So chlorella was developed, showed up on Earth about a billion years after spirulina. Remember, spirulina is a bacteria bacteria, a blue-green algae. Chlorella is does belong to the plant kingdom, but again, does not have the plant downsides, no lectins or oxalates. But it is technically a plant because it has a cellulose wall. In fact, it has the hardest cellulose wall in the plant kingdom. Now, the important there's two key important factors on that hard cell wall. The first one is that that hard cell wall attaches to toxins every kind of toxin, lead, mercury, radiation, aluminum, alcohol, by the way, it identifies alcohol, lactic acid, athletes like to take it because it pulls out lactic acid, and it chelates them, it pulls them out. It's better than activated charcoal for chelating because <clears throat> activated charcoal removes all minerals from your body, including the good yes. ones like magnesium and potassium. Chlorella does not. Chlorella is what's called an adaptogen. It only identifies the things that shouldn't be there. It's also great. We have a great protocol for Lyme disease. Um, it's great for pulling out chemotherapy. Uh, United Nations used it at Chernobyl to pull out radiation. As you probably know, after the Fukushima disaster yes. seven or eight years ago, the global supply of chlorella was bought up within 24 hours because everybody in Asia knows it's the only thing that pulls out radiation, but it pulls out everything. Mercury, we work with um, biological dentists that pull out mercury. And if you are still eating seafood, uh, you definitely want to be taking chlorella um, afterwards because it will pull out mercury. Um, so anyway, so very, very important aspect of algae. Now, chlor chlorella, or sorry, chlorophyll, which is in both algae, is very cleansing. But only chlorella is a detoxing algae. And because it's a detoxing algae, and, and we're going to talk about how it builds your health, we call ours recovery bits because we thought that was a lot easier to remember and to say because it helps you recover your health, recover from your day, recover from drinking, recover from sports, recover from any illness at all. So that's number one about that hard cell wall. It pulls out toxins. The other important thing about that hard cell wall is it has fiber and very small amount, but it still has fiber and fiber is critical to the health of your gut biome. That fiber feeds the gut, the bacteria in your gut, so they can generate what's called short chain fatty acids. And that's, is, that's what helps keep your gut healthy. So we all know that maintaining that gut biome is critical because the gut biome is, is also connected to your brain through the vagus nerve. And so you want to be sure that you've got a healthy gut. So that's number one about out this chlorella. Hard cell wall, pulls out toxins, feeds the gut. Number two, remember I said spirulina has the highest amount of protein in the world. Well, chlorella algae has the highest chlorophyll in the world. It has a thousand times more than Chinese greens, 25 times more than even liquid chlorophyll. So you say to yourself, so what's so what's the big deal about chlorophyll? For, well, for number one, even if you are eating vegetables, I can promise you, you are getting virtually no chlorophyll these days. Why? Because all of our soil is so overcropped. There are no minerals left in the soils for the for the plants to grow to pull up. So they don't have, contain any any nutrients or virtually none. If you've noticed that, if you buy, you know, you know, arugula or anything, it goes yellow probably in about four days. Um, also, our plants and our vegetables are grown far away now, so they are harvested before they're actually ripe. So the nutrients don't get a chance to get out to the leaves or the right. you know plant, the vegetables. So again, less nutrients. 
And because of the ozone layer being so damaged, they've done studies to find that there are, are all the plants now have more sugar and more carbs and less nutrients. So you could eat a room full of, of arugula and still not get the same amount of chlorophyll as in, in just a single serving of chlorella tablet. So it is truly the only source of decent chlorophyll in the world is from algae. So what's so important about chlorophyll? <laughs> well, I could talk all day about chlorophyll, but I'll tell you a couple, a couple. I know your mm -hmm. listeners can't see this, but we'll show this to you. What I'm showing is a, uh, a graphic image, and you can go online to find this, of the comparison of the, of the chemical composition of your hemoglobin compared to chlorophyll. And you'll find they are virtually identical. Yes. The only difference is that in blood, the center atom is uh, iron, and that's what carries oxygen. And in chlorophyll, it's magnesium. Why is this so important? Because chlorophyll builds your blood. In fact, up until just you know 50 years ago, chlorophyll was always used for the injured, for surgeries, because it kills, it builds your blood. Even up until World War II, um, during the war, if they ran out of blood transfusions, they would give the injured liquid chlorophyll because they would find that they would heal just as fast as if they'd had a blood transfusion. So, but it's, unfortunately, the chemical, the pharmaceutical industry has convinced us to take drugs and blah, blah, blah. And so the, the, the healing benefits of chlorophyll have been forgotten. Now, when you have healthy blood, guess what? You have a healthy body, you have healthy mitochondria, you have he healthy organs, you have a healthy brain. So it's critical to make sure that your blood is healthy and chlorophyll is probably the fastest, easiest way to do that. I wonder, it's so interesting because um, you mentioned the blood because, um, well, one of the, I, I am very interested in quantifying my health and there's this longevity, um, there are severe blood markers you can, we can monitor too. And yes. certain values tell you that um, like uh, your life expectancy and, and red blood cells, red, red blood cell count, the higher you are considered to be biologically younger. And I just wonder if- I'm, I'm probably 10. <laughs> <laughs> chlorophyll builds um, red blood cell uh, in your in your body. Do you know such a study or scientific evidence for that? Um, well, I I I don't I you know hopefully when we're bigger we can do studies like this. But I have I have some studies that show the different ailments that occur in your blood, and I'll go on a little bit of a geek side note here. So. Um, Mother Nature is so intelligent. She, um, in our blood, the hemoglobin has a negative charge around it. And that's so that they can repel one another so that they can travel through your blood vessels easily. So they stay round, which allows them to hold the oxygen, the iron atom in the middle that carries the oxygen. It's that negative charge is critical. Um, and the problem is that, um, and if you've ever held magnets together, you know how they repel yes. one another. So that's effectively what's happening in your blood with the hemoglobin negative charge mm -hmm. around it. But when your food, your diet is too acidic or when you're sick, when you have cancer or a virus, by the way, the, the COVID virus is a negative charge. And, and Otto Warburg, if you've ever read any research about him, he discovered that cancer cannot exist in an alkaline state. And al algae is the most alkaline food in the world. And when you have cancer or you work out too much or you have acidic food, which is you know, processed or dairy, it strips off the negative charge around the hemoglobin and what especially with covid and so because covid what covid does is it inserts itself it's not just a lung disorder it's a blood disorder and so it, and it inserts itself and kicks the iron atom out and inserts itself inside but what it does is it strips off the negative charge around the hemoglobin so now the hemoglobin can't repel one another and they clump mm. And so when you're, you know, this is one of the reasons why when you're athletic, you're throwing off lactic acid, it affects the, the pH of your blood, and that causes your blood to clump briefly, uh, which means it can't carry oxygen. So that's one of the reasons why you're fatiguing. Algae, especially chlorella and chlorophyll, are alkaline. So they help restore that negative charge to the outside of the hemoglobin so that they can now, again, effectively carry the iron atom inside and they um so you have oxygen and they're not clumping and that they if they clump they also can't get to all the tiny capillaries which also contributes to fatigue so that's one of the reasons why when you're eating so much acidic foods 
Uh, you're always fatigued. There's a thousand other reasons, but that's that's certainly yeah. one of them. They are so, almost like nano robots, like circulating in your blood and cleaning your body. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so chlorella, because it has so much chlorophyll, is very alkalining and helps restore. It, it helps build the build the blood, but it also pr- it restores any acidity that because uh, your your health is not just maintaining a, P, a bl- temperature of ninety eight point seven or ninety whatever that it is. Your blood needs to maintain a pH which is right in the middle of acidity and alkaline, and that's 7.34. Now, remember, I started down this whole path, this, this, this rabbit hole of algae, because my younger sister's oncologist recommended she have an alkaline diet. And I'm sure that this is one of the main reasons, because of her awareness of the maintaining the pH, because when your pH gets thrown off, then the blood clumps and you're not as healthy and it affects your immune system and all that sort of jazz. So chlorella is probably one of the best ways to maintain healthy blood. But here's the other cool thing about um, about uh, chlorophyll. Um, as I mentioned, spirulina has two um, pigments, a blue pigment called phycocyanin and yes. chlor- chlorophyll. Now, the blue pigment, I know, you, again, your listeners can't see this, but when you put a couple of the spirulina tablets in water, you will see the blue pigment come out, and it's beautiful. It's like the Aegean Sea, and it disperses evenly through the water. But when you put the chlorella mm-hmm. into water, it clumps. I did this about 20 times, and then I had my epiphany, and I, I researched it, and it was validated by science. This is because chlorophyll is a fat-based pigment, but the blue pigment in spirulina is a water-based pigment. So the water, the blue disperses evenly, and the chlorophyll does not disperse because fat and water don't mix. Why is this important? This gets back to the mitochondria. All of your health issues start at the cellular level and the health of the mitochondria. And to keep your mitochondria healthy, you need to be sure that they're getting the nutrients that they need and getting rid of the toxins in the and the reactive you know, reactive ox, uh, the ROS um, uh, uh, free radicals out and all the other toxins out. And the best way to do that is to ensure that your cell walls are healthy and and permeable. And in order for that to happen, they have to have healthy fats. And because chlorophyll is a fat based pigment it does that. And the best analogy I've given to people is, you know, when you have dirty windows, um, you can't see out and sunlight can't get in. Um, And so think of chlorophyll as window washers for your cell walls. It facilitates the movement of nutrients in and toxins out because it heals the cell walls. And if that isn't enough reason to take chlorophyll, I don't know (laughs) what is. (laughs) So, because you want to keep those mitochondria healthy and happy, and this is the best way to do it. So that's number two about why chlorophyll is so healing uh, for your body. And I, the combination of the high chlorophyll, which is cleansing to the blood, cleansing to the cell walls, the pulling of the toxins. I tell people, you know, you take a shower every day when you get up. Well, taking chlorella algae every day is like giving your body a shower from the inside. This is not something you take once and then forget about it. This is something you need to do every single day. And we recommend it at night. And here's why. When you sleep, your body goes through a detox and repair cycle. Uh, um, And I'm not sure if you know this, but even part of that repair when you're in a deep sleep is in your brain. Your brain will shrink a small amount in in deep sleep. And this is because it has its own Mm -hmm. lymphatic system. Um, that washes away chemicals and toxins and whatever. So when you have chlorella in your body while you're sleeping, it facilitates this detox and it facilitates the repair cycle. Um, you, I haven't mentioned this yet, but chlorella also has the highest amount of RNA and DNA in the world until they discovered this. They, the sardines were known as having the high, highest RNA and DNA, but chlorella has even more. And chlorella has something called chlorella growth factor. This is because chlorella is the fastest growing organism in the entire universe. Uh, if you've known anything about biofuel, it's always with chlorella because they're, they either try to tap the energy as the, as the cells subdivide or they try to um, do something with the oil that's in the chlorella. But when, so when you take chlorella, it also, that chlorella growth factor, I know that's a mouthful, um, speeds up your own cells. This is why we have found that, and we've had this tested with athletes, when you have an injury or surgery, 
uh, it will help you heal twice as fast. Um, and there's lots of scientific documents um, that show the healing properties of chlorella, but it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. So when you take it when you're sleeping, um, it not only facilitates that repair, pulls out toxins. It's also known as a, um, a uh, it stimulates peristalsis, also known as bowel movements. Uh, and elimination is a very important part of being healthy. So um, this will help you have a nice healthy bowel movement. And anyone who's on a keto diet, um, um, uh, we know that there's you, you're probably not getting a lot of fiber because you don't want the carbs. This will help in an enormous way. If anyone's taking any medications, constipation is also an issue. Again, this will help in a big way. So um, generally for wellness purposes, you could start with five or 10 tablets um, just to get things rolling. But if you want to detox, you need to have closer to the 20 to 30 tablets. Uh, and you could cycle in and cycle out. You could do wellness, you know, a couple of weeks, just five or 10, and then do, you know, 20 or 30 every day. But I will tell you, you will feel so clean and, and your body will crave the chlorella. Um, so, you, you know, you know, I'm a super user. I mean, I like, yeah. to, like over a hundred a day, but um, you don't have to take that much. I just love it. But um, here's the interesting thing about both of them. It doesn't matter which one you take, but they do complement each other. As you can see, the the spirulina gives you the energy for the morning and the focus for your day or your workouts. And then the chlorella facilitates the detox and the health and wellness aspect of your life and um, facilitates sleep. So they do completely different things. But if you took one or both, um, they both have 40 vitamins and minerals. They both have at least 60% protein. They both have the highest concentration of chlorophyll in the world. They both have K2 they would allow you to eliminate almost all of your other supplements if you take the spirulina you can also eliminate coq10 and the um and mm -hmm. uh, certainly fish oil or any kind of omega-3 um, because they're so rich with nutrition and it's food remember and you're so your body absorbs 99 percent of it when you have supplements those are made at extracts and factories and your body doesn't recognize most of them so um, I say taking a supplement is like listening to a soloist. When you take algae, it's like listening to an orchestra. Everything, all the enzymes and coenzymes and factors and cofactors and all the pigments and and uh, um, you know other other sub nutrients that aren't even really discovered yet or explained anyways, um, all just work in harmony. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. So, um, and because spirulina satisfies your hunger, you'll find you'll eat less groceries. You'll in either of them, especially chlorella, you'll need virtually no, you, you don't have to eat vegetables ever again. If you don't want to, you don't have to argue with your kids. You don't have to argue with your parent, your parents or your husband, just have at least five tablets a day and you will meet all of your green nutritional needs instantly. So it's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty amazing. I know that um, um, I, 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 would, I, would, I would continue. I can continue discussing like um, the differences between Corella and Spirulina for hours more. But uh, I would like love to talk about energy bits as well, because I think by now, most of the listeners are probably very interested in, you know, if not yet, taking or considering to take um, Corella. Uh, microalgae supplements but not all micro uh, microalgae supplements are made equal right and we already mentioned that your your your, um, your energy bits products are organic so it's certified organic third party party tested um it's made in the cleanest fresh water but what what are the other other uh, important things to consider when people are choosing to buy best yes. products well, most algae, uh, uh, certainly until we came along, was grown in China uh, and, and actually India. Uh, I would never buy any algae from China. The, the standards are much lower. You just really don't know what you're getting. And the problem is, um, you know, there could be, if there's, if there's if they use binders if there's such small amounts they don't even have to put it on the label so you want to be sure that you're getting it from a very reputable company and they almost all of those other companies use high heat to dry the algae because they're low pr um, price so they're lower quality and they and the high heat kills the enzymes and just deteriorates some of the uh, nutrition so we don't do that the other thing is uh, we talked a little bit about the hard cell well and chlorella and i need to tell you a little bit more detail about that um i'm very grateful to the original company which is japanese who started the whole chlorella industry they're called sun chlorella very 
very um, honored that they did this. Uh, and they also patented the technique. They discovered that you had to crack the chlorella in order for the nutrients in it to get into your body. And they developed a technique um, they call dynomil, which way they tumble the chlorella with glass beads mm -hmm. to cr physically crack the chlorella. Um, and this technique is used by virtually everybody. But the problem with it is that the, the glass heats up and lead from the glass leaks into the chlorella, which, you know, lead is not a substance you should have in your body. It's known to cause birth defects and brain disorders. So when I was starting the company and I heard about this problem, um, I said, well, that's not going to work for me. There's got to be a better way. And there, and there was a new technique that was just coming out. It was more expensive, but that's what we used. And to crack our cell wall on our chlorella, we pass it through a sound chamber. So and, uh, the vibrations are what cut uh, crack the chlorella. So it, there's no heat, no lead. Um, and so we're very proud of that. It, it does cost more. But, um, you know, if you remember... I didn't even plan to start a company. I just wanted to help my sister. And then I learned that I could help a few more people and then I could help a few more people and then I built this company. So everything that we've done from growing it in triple filtered spring mountain water to um, not using high heat to dry it, to not putting binders in it, um, not putting fillers in it. We package it in UV protected bags so the chlorophyll doesn't get leached out by the sunlight, not you know using the fast technique to crack the chlorella. Um, everything we do is to preserve the nutrition and ensure the safety. And ultimately that's what you need. Um, because if you're using, you know, these, it's not inexpensive a bag we sell our bag we sell our algae in tiny tablets as i mentioned and a large bag on our website at energybits.com is 120 dollars now i don't want people that's us dollars i don't want people to have sh you know sticker shock um because we first of all we have a 20 percent discount code to share with you that uh, works on everything and the discount code is ken co hacks ken co hacks all one word and you'll see the coupon box in the shopping cart and so that brings it down to $96. But you, just in case you're thinking still 96 is a little bit much, I want to remind you that when we use that quote from NASA that says one gram of algae has the same nutrition as 1,000 grams of fruits and vegetables, I did the math and figured out that one bag of our algae tablets with 1,000 tablets has the same nutrition equal to 551 pounds of vegetables. Now, that's 551 pounds of vegetables You at $3 a pound for organic uh, would be $1,600. And it's 551 pounds of vegetables you didn't have to carry home from the grocery store or clean or cook or maybe throw away. <laughs> so, so it's what I call very efficient nutrition. And remember, you could take two tablets if you wanted. You could make a, a bag last a very long time. Five or ten a day would be better, but you know, follow whatever feels right for you. We're we're not here to push the product. We just want people to be healthy because it's a fast and easy and safe way for you, your your mm -hmm. children, your pets. By the way, love this stuff. Doesn't matter which one, and um, it will. And by the way, also because people don't want to go to the grocery store, and also because there's a lot of um, vegetables we discard. Algae never goes bad. Our tablets never go bad. We have to put an expiry date on it because we're required by the FDA. And the, it's usually two or three years uh, is the shelf life technically. But algae never goes bad. And here's why. Algae is, like I said earlier, technically not a plant. And so when you grow crops like, you know, corn or wheat, and neither of which are good for you anyways, um, you get one crop a year, number one. And if the growing conditions deteriorate, if there's no sunlight or not enough rain, they just die, right? Not algae. Al if the growing conditions deteriorate, algae just goes dormant indefinitely until they return and it starts growing again. And a proof of this is I have an article, I read an article, I think a National Geographic team went to the Antarctic and they got some ice uh, that they carbon dated to be like 2 billion years old and there was some algae in it. And so they put the algae in a Petri dish and added some water and sure enough, started growing. That's fascinating. fascinating. <laughs> that's, yeah, fascinating. And it's a fascinating testimony to um, what you just described. It's such a, it's full of vitality, algae, and in a, in a way, intelligent, it's, amazingly it's, intelligent. You know, I forgot that that's one of the, I used to describe it as this, 
I and I, I'm going to come start using it again. I call it intelligent food for two reasons. You have to be intelligent to take it, and it knows what to do in your body. It's you don't have to give it any instructions. Just let it do its work, and and uh, it will help. Now it's not algae healing you. It's it's giving your body what it needs to heal itself. And the sad thing is, 97% of our illness, chronic illnesses these days are from due to lifestyle choices. We either have the, we don't have the right nutrition that allows us to be healthy and we have too many toxins. Something like 200,000 chemicals have been released into our world since World War II. 200,000. Our immune systems were not built to sustain that kind of toxic load and any chemicals that are tested are tested in isolation, which is ridiculous. We don't live in a bubble. So you're layering toxin after toxin after, and each one may have a small amount of detrimental damage, but when you add them all up every day, that's why I say you've got to take chlorella every day because every day you're exposed to air pollution and, and you know, toxins and pesticides in your food, even if you wash it and fumes from your carpet and, and your cosmetics. And so, um, if you want your body to be operating optimally, you need to give it optimal nutrition and you need to get rid of the toxins that are preventing it from functioning to its, uh, to its best uh, ability. And algae just solves that problem in spades. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, one positive thing that can come out of this ongoing pandemic, I might imagine, is people's heightened awareness about the importance of health, uh, so our, our body's immune system, and we couldn't uh, get into the deep uh, because algae is a, has a great immunomodulating property, yes. and we didn't have time to go into that. But given such, you know, people's heightened awareness, um, I might imagine that uh, like this is uh, there, there is no better time for a company like um, EnergyBit to you know further educate people about algae's um, health benefits and so on. Um, do you have any exciting new plan for EnergyBits um, which you would like to share with our audiences? Well, we you know we have a big vision, um, uh, so we just want to get discovered. We've done all the science. I design. I'm the chief scientific officer. I also design all the packaging. We made it as friendly and attractive as possible. Uh, we're very active on social, our energy bits handle, and Twitter and Facebook. We're uh, I'm speaking at conferences. I'm going to be at the biohacking conference and speaking in Miami in, in October. We're doing everything we can to give every people, everybody make the science available and understandable and the product is clean and pure. But our big vision is to, you know, um, become a big, you know, to have a foundation, to give this away to nursing homes and mm -hmm. schools and disaster areas, teach people how to grow it themselves in countries like Africa. I mean, this is, but it's, I want to do it as a, as an independent company. I've turned down venture capital. I was on Shark Tank. They did, actually didn't want my, they, I knew they didn't want to invest and in, I just wanted to get visibility. So, um, we may take investors at the right time, but it would have to be the right people. We want people to benefit from algae. We want the world to benefit from algae. So there's a lot yet. We have other products that we want to um, come out with, but we, you know, we can't do anything because we're bootstrapped, <laughs> and uh, every day we're is a struggle, quite honestly. So we, we just know that once somebody big notices us, things will start moving a lot faster. But uh, and I just want to mention one last time about the environment because Earth Day is coming up. It's April. Um, and I think every day should be Earth Day. We live in a world that COVID, as you mentioned, has heightened our awareness of the importance of our immune system. And algae is the easiest, fastest way to, to build that. But it's also alerted us to the fact that we all live on this planet together. And we need to take better care of our planet uh, because it's the only one we got. And um, algae is the most sustainable crop in the world. And that movie, Suspiracy, S-E-A-S-P-I-R-A-C-Y, I urge people to watch it. It shows the devastation that's happening below the surface that you're not aware of with these commercial fishing. And the poor fish in the poor ocean doesn't have a voice. So I'm so grateful that this movie was done. So it opens your eyes to what's going on. And they point out twice in the movie that algae has more protein than fish and more, and it's where the fish get the omega-3 from. So if you want to support the ocean and our earth, 
with more sustainable choices, choosing algae every day is the easiest, fastest, guaranteed way to do that. So um, we hope to support more environmental institutions and organizations as we get bigger. Um, we're like, I've, I'm 11 years in on this and I'll be here for another 11 or 22. However, you know, this is my life. So um, um, I'm becoming known as the algae gal. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's the greatest title I have ever heard. I would love to become an algae girl as well. <laughs> but you are a person with a big mission. Your your company, Energy Bit, is a com- uh, on a mission of you know to achieve bigger things. You mentioned sustainability, ocean, and earth. Um, it's much more than you know uh, venture capital and uh, profit. So I truly appreciate that, and I I feel. Um, so um so honored to um to be um able to present such a company i would very much like to uh, spread positive words about products i have personally loved and um as i mentioned algae is it's such a natural part of me it's it's um sounds but i have learned so yes. much um, today through you catherine and um, thank you so much for for your time today and uh, you're very welcome Thank you. We'll get you some. We'll send you some <laughs> more algae great. today. Thank you for that well. too. And all the um, information and um, um, about the movie, for example, I would put in the show notes so that people can find the information easily. So thank you again, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you. It was very my honor to be here. Thank you for finding us, and, and thank you for the work you do. Thank you. This was a podcast from Kenkoax. To follow us, subscribe on the channel Kenkoax on all the places where you can find podcasts.